Hi, today I'm going to talk about experimental test plans for material model calibration. And I will specifically talk about what experiments you should perform if you want to calibrate the material model for a rubber material. And there isn't just one answer here. The best test plan will depend on a little bit what you're trying to do. So I divided up into three groups. If you're interested in dynamic predictions, there is small frequency domain simulations using a finite element solver, and you're interested in small strains, 1% or smaller typically, I have a special plan for that. The second group is slow monotonic loading. So you just want something basic. You want to do uh, time domain analysis, and you want to do something quick and dirty in some sense. I have a solution for that. And finally, the general loading case where you, you want to be really accurate and you want to do mainly time domain analysis, large strains, arbitrary strain histories. You need to do a little bit more testing, but I'll show you what you can do in that case. So let's start with dynamic predictions, frequency domain work. Um, here the answer is, as expected, dynamic mechanical analysis, DMA. You want to start with a frequency, uh, you start with an amplitude sweep at a constant frequency, and you do this to find out the domain of strains in which the response is linear viscoelastic. Then once you establish that, you go ahead and do a frequency sweep uh, to measure the storage and loss modulus inside that uh, range of strains. And uh, if you want to uh, get a temperature dependent material model, you can repeat these frequency sweeps that will allow you to do a time temperature superposition uh, calibration in the end. Um, so that's for dynamic loading. If you're interested in the slow monotonic loading case, then the, what I recommend is a very simple unit axle tension test. You need to do this typically on a dog bone shaped specimen. I preferred ASTM D638, but there are other standards that are equally good. Uh, you deform the specimen to large strain monotonically, and you repeat this two or three times using different specimens. Um, some people say that you really should test rubbers using different loading modes, say biaxial bi or shear. That's not necessary. You don't need to do that as long as you use the experimental data in the end to calibrate something called an I1-based hyperelastic model. And examples of that include uh, the Ruda Boyce model and the Yo model. So if you stick with these, you don't need to do multiple loading modes. A single loading mode is fine, and that, that really reduces the cost and time to achieve this. But remember, if you go for this solution, you will not be able to predict time dependence, dissipation, hysteresis, or any of those effects in your material. Finally, for general loading, you want to understand a little bit what's going on, and you want to do a viscoelastic uh, simulation using your finite element solver. I would do something as follows. I would load to say 5% strain. I would hold the strain for a minute, and then I would unload. And then keep doing that cyclic loading with larger and larger strains. Uh, you can go to 5%, 10%, perhaps 50%. Um, in the end, you can either load to failure if you're interested in failure, or I would unload to zero and measure the residual strain in the specimen after the test is over. And you always should repeat your test a few times in order to see if the data is repeatable. And uh, these tests should also be done on dog bone shaped specimens, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Um, constant strain rate is fine in these tests. If you do these tests, you can calibrate a nonlinear viscoelastic material model to your data. So this is really useful. This is where you can get super accurate results in the end in your finite element simulations. As I mentioned, if you want to predict different uh, behaviors at different temperatures, repeat the tests that I proposed at different temperatures. And then once you're done with your testing, you can use M calibration um, to calibrate a suitable material model to the experimental data. And I have other videos showing how you can do that. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.